Okay. Are they doing? Are we all blessed? Amen. Praise God. Okay, so how is our the start of our new year? Amen. No. No. Okay. Praise God. Hallelujah. Uh, so today we're going to talk about the prayers. Without the power of message for today, it is the uh, prayers that can be said. Who wants to get this? Amen. Amen. Okay, and, and, and I know that uh, everyone knows how to pray, right? So, but people pray for uh, different reasons. The people pray for different motives, and people pray uh, depending on their goals. But all of them want to get this talk, right? So, as I said, as I said a while ago, that our, our lessons for today will be focused on the things. That we need to do in order for us to have effective prayer life. You want to know that? Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's all prepare ourselves and let's all pray. Father, we thank you so much, O God, for your grace. And we thank you so much, O God, that once again, O Lord, that you have guided us in this place, O God, to be blessed by the power of your words, O God. Father, we pray that you will move us, O God, that you will bring us to another level of our faith, O God. Where you will be able to move mightily in us, O Lord God, in our life, Lord, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you so much and invite the Holy Spirit to be in our midst, Lord, to teach us your ways, O Lord God, to bring understanding, O God, about two words, O Lord God, that gives life to those who receive it, Lord God. Father, we thank you so much. It's our prayer, Lord. Be with us and lead us, O Lord God, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we take comfort and be taught to be the way that reaches the hands of God. In Jesus' name, we magnify and rebuke every word that will exalt itself against your words, O God, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you so much for the praise you. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. So, as I said, um, uh, people, you know, a lot. All people pray at one point of their lives, right? And and then when people when pray, when people pray, they pray uh, for reasons, for motives, for goals. Okay. And as I said a while ago, when all of them when they pray, they want to get to soul, right? So it doesn't matter how noble a prayer is. It doesn't matter how uh, sincere our effort may be. In our prayers, it, 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 it doesn't matter how great our goal may be, or maybe how fervent you you pray it. Okay, so here is one thing that I want you to understand: that every prayer that you pray is all to be focused on. Uh, all to be focused on one thing only, and what's that? That's you pray that. Right? So, not your will, not what you want, not what you desire, church. It ought to be focused on the will of God if you want your prayers to be heard. You see, the will of God is the key in order for us to have our prayers answered. Amen? So, let me tell you how God passionate about us and His will for our life. You see, he doesn't just want you to perceive his will. He doesn't want you only to, to practice his will. But he wants you to pray his will. Alright, so um, if our text is for today, if you turn your Bible to 1 John chapter 5, verse 43. So this will be our text for today. Okay, so let me tell you what this verse says. Okay, so these verses. Tell us that there is only one prayer that you can pray. Right? You are 100% guaranteed that God will hear it and God will answer it. Okay? So if that is the prayer, what, be, what, type, what kind of prayer is it? It is the kind of prayer that you pray in the will of God. God will be guaranteed his soul. God will hear it. God will answer it. So this is what I want you to take of uh, take, uh, take, uh, this morning. I'll summarize it so you will have an idea, so you have an idea what we are going to talk about for today. Alright, so a prayer, here is it. A prayer prayed in the will of God 
is done day to accomplish the work of God in your life. We get that. A prayer praying in the will of God is guaranteed, church, to accomplish the work of God in your life. Are we aiming to that? Amen. Amen. All right. So, so in First John, Apostle, Apostle John, this as what I think is the, in my opinion, maybe the greatest lesson on prayer in the entire Bible. There are so many, there are so many lessons about you know about prayers, right? There are so many, there are so many aspects. But this one aspect that I would like to share to you is only one. Alright, but you can you know study a lot of prayer. You, you will see a lot of teachings and preachings about prayers. Right? But today I just going to share you just one aspect of prayer. And I believe in my heart, in my opinion, this is the greatest uh, lessons that we can hear, we can see in the entire Bible. Alright, so um why? Because John tells us that when when your prayer is focused correctly, let me repeat again. When your prayers is focused correctly, your prayers will be answered positively. Right? So when your when your prayer is focused correctly, our Father will answer them positively. Okay? He will always respond. Okay? To the right kind of prayer that we utter. Okay, so there are three three things that I would like to share to you for today. So let me tell you what is praying in the will of God does for our prayers. Okay? So what's the will of God? What what, what is what what is praying in the will of God does for us? For our prayer, number one, the will of God help us in in our praying. Okay, so the will of God help us in our praying. So if you turn your Bible in First John chapter five, verse fourteen, I'll be reading it in, in the NIV version. The Bible says, "This is a confidence that we have in approaching God. If we ask anything according to His will, the Bible says, He what? He hear us." Okay, so there's a word here. There's a word confidence. You see the word confidence here in this scripture? The word confidence here is a very interesting term in the Greek language. Okay? It literally means freedom of speech. It's confidence in the Greek word. It's, it literally means it's freedom, uh, freedom of speech. It is actually a political term that refers to the freedom to speak your mind in the public assembly right so and what apostle john is saying, saying is that when you go to god in prayer you ought to be free your prayers ought to be free your prayers need to be free free from what free from what you want free from from what uh, from your selfish desire Free from what you think you need. Okay? Instead, we, when we go to God's presence, <clears throat> our attitude should be, Lord, I want to find your will. I want to know your will, and I want to do your will. So that should be our attitude when we come to prayer. Okay? But especially when we enter into the very presence of God. Alright, so you remember the Lord's uh, prayer? Do you remember the Lord's prayer? Uh, there's a part of the Lord's prayer that God, that Jesus asked us that this is how we should pray. You can see that in Matthew chapter 6, right? Verse 9 to 10. Okay, and it says that our Father, who art in heaven, who, uh, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Okay, so pray. Praying your the praying your kingdom come, okay. It means that you and your will be done, okay. Is that is it's it's a uh, it's a submission to God that you want that you are inviting the very presence of God in your life, 
You want the praises of God, the kingdom of God, to be manifested in your life and in your situations, or whatever uh, you know, whatever circumstances that you uh, you are you are in right now. All right. So, okay, you actually, what it means that when you uh, when you invite the kingdom of God to come into your life. Okay, it means that you acknowledge the sovereignty of God. That He is in control. And, and, and that you that you learn to trust Him, okay, that you uh, believe that God will bring the best in the life. Right? So you see, one reason why I mess up a lot of time. You know, I mess up a lot of time in my prayers because sometimes I forgot the purpose of prayer. Prayer is not to get my will be done in heaven, but to get God's will be done on earth. Because most of the time, we want you to will nothing, right? It's to be done. But instead, you know, it should be what? It should be, should be different, right? It should be, it should be what? That the will of God should be what? Be done on earth, in my life, in my family, in my situations. That's how we should invite God. Because we know that when, when what the will of God for us is perfect, inclusive, right? You know you need, when God manifested His will upon your life, you won't need anything at all. Right? It will be everything that you need, even if you don't know that you need it, anyway, God did it to you. Because that's the will of God for your life. He wants to bless your life. Right? Okay? The way I understand that. So that's the reason why I mess up with my prayer. Because I want my, my will to be done. Okay? In heaven. Right? And also in the earth. So that's, that's, that's a mess up. Okay? So, so you need to understand it's not... To get what I want. When you pray, it's not that what you know, it's not that you get what you want, but what he wants. Okay, God wants. Remember that. So when you go to God in prayer with these three determinations that I am going to pray in the will of God. Okay? And and and, and Apostle Paul, Apostle John said that you if you do that, if you have the three determinations that you want to do the will of God, you pray the will of God, not your not not your will. Okay, but the Bible says that you are walking in the presence of God with an unbelievable confidence, knowing that He will answer your prayer. That's the reason why God said, you know, and, and, and He says that, you know, this is the confidence that we have, right? So so that's, that's when we align ourselves and our thinking you know, our heart to the will of God in our life. So, as a matter of fact, I want you to understand this, church, that the more determined you are to be in the center of God's will, the more effective your prayer is going to be. You get that? The more determined you are, if you are to be in the center of God's will, you want to surround your life with the will of God in your life. What will God, what will God do to us? The more effective prayer is going to be in the life. Right? So it's very important, church, sure, that every time that we pray, you don't just utter a prayer. Right? That hoping, you just, you know, throwing a stone in the air and hoping that somehow, you know, it hits someone, it hit them, right? So it is prayer. You don't pray a prayer that is like a shotgun for you. Right? When you receive the shotgun, it's go everywhere, right? So you need to be specific. You want to have to have a prayer. Answer. Amen? So you remember this that you need to, we need to be determined to be always in the God center of God's will. So that our mind will be changed and be and, and transformed to agree to the will of God tonight. You know what will happen if you do that? Then your prayers will always be heard and answered. Right? Okay, so praise God. Say so, and, and now I'm afraid that many people, uh, you know, many people many people go to the presence of God without confidence. 
Let me experience that. Even Christians' community, even the church, uh, and a lot of Christians go to the presence of God without any confidence at all. You know? Deep down, uh, deep back of their mind, of our mind, our prayer, are not going to be answered. Because I've been praying this for over and over. It's been a while that I've been praying, but I didn't get any answer at all. I don't believe that God is going to answer me. Right? Sometimes, you know, we have that unconsciously in our mind that when we pray, we have that. But, okay, maybe God will answer my prayer. Right? And that's not the kind of attitude that we should have when we approach God. All right? So you see, you know what's a problem in this kind of prayer? That even the Christian itself, we the Christians, we don't have confidence, we don't even, you know, know if God will answer our prayer. You know what the problem with this? Is that we have the wrong focus. Right? We keep coming to God and we think that we you know we know what's the will of God when we really don't know. Okay? So yeah, I know the will of God, but actually because I don't have the confidence in that. Okay, so Apostle Bob John is saying to us that God is eager to heal your faith. That's hundred but only is eager to hear to the gifts in the center of the past. Okay? He wants to hear your prayer. God wants to answer your prayer. But He wants your prayer to be in line with His will. Right? Always be, should always be in that in line with the will. So in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16, let's turn our Bible quickly. On Hebrews chapter 4, verse 16. Okay, the Bible says, Let us then approach the throne of grace with confidence. Let's say confidence. Right? So the Bible says, Let us approach the throne of grace with confidence. So when you have confidence in your heart that God, you are praying the will of God for your life. So what will happen? So that you may be seen mercy and find grace to help us in our time of need. You see how God answered his prayer? Right? We don't know for that. If we know that we will find the life. Right? That is you don't have problem. You're just, just showing to God that you don't trust him. Right? The Bible says he said, you have to approach God in what? In confidence. You know for certain that God, what you've been praying for, is God, is what God wants you to do. And to happen in life. And that's the confidence. Right? So you, church, you stop begging to God. Instead, know the will of God. Will of God. Amen? Hallelujah. So, so God is so eager and so and he, he loves to answer our prayer. I want you to understand this church. Okay? Alright? So, and let's if we go back to our verse, to our main verse, in 1 John chapter 5, verse 15, he says that this is a confidence we have in him, right? So, who is the we in this scripture? Huh? Us, right? We are, we are the true believers and followers of Jesus Christ. Those who have been born again in God's family. Those people who open up their hearts to God, to Jesus, and invite Him to be the Lord, to be, uh, to invite Jesus to be Lord, and to God. Save you in their life. Alright? Are we getting it? Okay? So, hallelujah. So, if you are, if you call us about, Apostle John says, this was actually saying to us, that if you call yourself as really a born again believer, and if you, you will call yourself of us as if you are committed followers of Jesus Christ, you have no doubt in your mind that you have a relationship with God through Jesus. Do we? Do we, do we have that confidence? Do we know that we have a relationship with God through Jesus Christ. Okay? So he said that 
then if we have that confidence and we have relationship with God, then we said that we ought to go to God and expect God to hear you and to answer you. In the same way, the child expect his father to answer you. Amen? So if you are a child of God, you will walk in the presence of God. Just like a child does to this father. Okay? You know that if I'm praying in the will of God and through the will of God, okay? God hears. God's prayers will be attempted every day of our life. Right? He will do it. God will do it right there. And that's knowing that the will of God is in it. And I think the will of God has definitely been answered. Right? So, church, that is why knowing the will of God for our life is so important. Okay? Why? Right? Number one, as I said, why? Well, number one is that. You build your confidence in the earth. It helps you to help us to have the confidence to come to God in boldness, in assurances. Right? Okay? So that's number one. Number two, okay? The will of God helps us focus on our prayers. Number one is that it helps to build confidence, right? Number two, okay, knowing the will of God for your yeah, for, for your life, help us to focus on our prayers. You are now focusing yourself specifically to the will to the will, will of God in your life. So you don't you don't just pray hoping and sorry, Lord, hopefully this will suit your will. Right? No. 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 Knowing the will of God will help us focus. To pray specifically for that love of God to manifest in our life. Are we getting it? Okay, so uh, let's go back in, in John chapter 5, verse 15. Okay, it says, This is the counsel we have in approaching God that if we ask anything according to His will. So I want you to understand this that God's, God will not answer anything outside of His will. Are we agree with that. Okay, God, but he will on he will answer every prayer that is inside of his will. Okay? So meaning if I pray in the will of God, so my focus now is that every time I pray, I should pray always and confidently in the will of God, right? So we know we understand. Are we on the same page, right? Do you agree? Okay. So if you we know that every time we come to God and pray that we should be praying the will of God, it means that I need to know the will of God. Right? If I need to know the will of God, I need to seek the will of God. Right? So when I seek the will of God, the Bible says, He will answer me. The Bible says, when you ask, the Lord will what? When you ask, huh? That will answer, right? So you, you know that it is important the will of God. So you need to know the will of God. So to know the will of God, you need to seek the will of God. To seek the will of God, you have to be what? You need to study. But you, 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 you have to be serious in your seeking. You don't just go to the mosque and say, okay, Mr. Pastor, what said, you know, that you have to, you know, to, 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 to read the Bible. It's not that. You have to position your heart to be able to receive the will of God. Right? You don't just need to know the word. You have to have a definite uh, goal of motives, right motives, in order to be able to know if you want to see this word. You want to know this word. Right? So that you will be able to do it. So it reminds you, when, when you seek the will of God, the Bible says, you will find it. And when you find it, now that's the time that you have the personal revelations of God's will in your life. So what's the purpose of revelation of God's will in your life? 
so that you will be able to do it. Okay? Whatever God says to you, you will do it. Right? Are we getting it? Okay? So that's the, that's the, uh, that's how God works. You know? We, we, you know, you know, we need the will of God, so I start to know the will of God, and I start, if I want to know the will of God, I have to seek the will of God. When God reveals His will unto my life, I must be willing 100% to do what God says He wants me to do. Alright? Are we getting it? Okay? So, hallelujah. So, not only that, God wants to go deeper. Alright? He wants you, you know, God will not reveal His will in your life. If you are not willing to do whatever he said, he will say. Right? Are we getting it? Now, uh, what I'm saying is that you, know, you can't even know what is the will of God. God will not reveal to you his will in your life until you are determined to do whatever God will tell you or speak to you or give you to you. Alright, are we getting it? Because a lot of Christians, they want to seek the will of God. But when God reveals His will to them, okay, they're not willing to do it. Yeah? And that's the reason why a lot of Christians, they don't, you know, they don't know what's the will of God in their life. They've been seeking God in their life. You know, yeah, I'm sick God, I would like to see God. I want to have the relationship with God in my life. You know what's the reason why you don't have the relationship of God's will in your life? Because when you seek Him, your heart is not determined to do whatever you will say. Are we getting it? Right? You need to understand. Is that you cannot treat God's word like a cafeteria like a cafeteria line or or, or a lady of faith, right? So um, he said, uh, oh, oh, I, I do that part. Oh, okay. I do that part for the will of God. And I'll follow this one, but oh, I don't want to follow that too. Um, oh, I can do that, but not this one, right? You know what I'm trying to say? I can follow this one, not this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, not this one. So what happens when you seek God? You have, you know, when you, every time you seek God, in order for you to receive the revelations of God's will in your life, you need to be determined. Before you seek the will of God in your life, you need to have purpose in your heart that, Lord, whatever you're going to say, I will do it. 100%. Whatever it is, if there's something that you want me to give up, I will give it up. If there's something I want to do, I will do it. If you, if there's something, if, if, if you want me to go to that place, I will go. Speak to me, God. What do you want me to do? Right? And you, if you have that kind of attitude, God will give to you His will. But if you don't have that attitude in your heart, then don't expect that God will be with you. And that's the reason why a lot of Christians, they're just kind of, kind of floating around the air, not knowing what's the will of God. Why? Because we don't have this purpose in our heart to do what God will say. Are we getting it? No. Okay? So, you need this this is kind of you know kind of deep, but you need to learn that you have to apply it in your life. When you when you're seeking, don't check your attitude. Don't make any reservations that you will do up to a certain point in your life. All right? To so remember, when you seek God, He is expecting you to do it right? without any reservation. Okay. If you have that attitude, you will always hit them. You will always have the personal revelations of 
als der So, and uh, I don't understand why some people associate with him. I want to see it because I'm scared. Right? But you need to understand this that God is best at knowing what is best for us. He knows. He's best in that. Right? He knows what you need, even though we don't need it after we. This is actually what we need. That is going to speak for us. Alright? So in Colossians chapter 1, verse 9, okay, it says, so We have, I would like to read it, Colossians chapter 1, verse 9. It says, We have not stopped praying for you since the first day we heard about you. In fact, we always pray that, uh, we always pray that God will show you. Everything he wants you to do. That you may have all the wisdom and understanding his spirit gives. So, what the scripture says is that in us here. God has given us tools to discover and know his will. Right? He has given us a Bible, He has given us the spirit of God. He has given us the people of God. Right? So He has given us the tool for us to learn to know His will. Okay? Are we getting it? So the Bible says that He is always hard to start for us that God will show everything we want. Okay? Everything He wants so, so that you know, so that we can do it. Okay? And the third thing here is the Bible says that. And that you may have all the wisdom. You know what wisdom? Wisdom is applying the right in uh, the right principles in our life so that we can have the right to say. Right? Wisdom is applying the right principles of God's word. So when you apply the word of God, it will always bring good result and fruitful and productive result. And that is what is called wisdom. That comes from the word of God. So God says that He always said that you know that God's will will show you everything He wants you to do. So when God reveals to you what He wants you to do, that is His done. Right? And when we apply it, we will always bring good, effective, fruitful results. That will bring glory. Uh -huh. Amen? And then not only that, he said, I'm the son, and, and that you may all, all the, uh, you may, I'm sorry, that you may have all the wisdom and understanding that his spirit gives. You know, there's a, always the word of the Holy Spirit. Every time God revealed and spoke to us, you know, every time that God speaks to us, his words, the word of the Holy Spirit, there's always the working of the Holy Spirit in it will bring information, it will bring understanding, okay, to the words that is from the text. If the Holy Spirit will inspire us, okay, to do what God wants us to do. Amen? Are we getting it? Okay. So, so once we go, uh, Go to God in prayer with this one desire, okay? And what's that desire? Is that, you know, this word, this word of God says that, you know, that, Lord, every time you go to God in prayer, I want you to understand that, you know, Lord, I would like to pray, and I want to be straight, you know? I'm not here to get what I want. I'm here, I'm praying. You know what you want to do. That should be a whole dark heart. Every time that you pray. Okay? Right? I'm here. What you want me to do? 
And I am here not to get my will be done on earth or in heaven. But I'm here, I'm praying. I want your will be done down here. That should be all for you. Every time you see the Holy Spirit. Don't go into the Right? Hello? You're getting it? Okay. Cool. Alright, so. Hallelujah. We're getting it. So now, knowing the will of God, I said, will help us focus on our prayer. It helps us because when God reveals to you his will, right? And you keep him, you know, the joy of you and the family that you will feel and I will say to you. If you have that, God will speak to you, right? So you will not things to you. Now, when you come to God and pray, you see, so you know the will of God in your life is when you do that. Now, when you pray, you pray the specific will of God in your life. Right? Let's say you have your circumstances, you have your you circumstances, you have praying, you seek the will of God, and God is going to do it. So when you pray, you pray what God is going to do. Right? So no more baby. Right? No more hopefully come to God's in It's not what you call confidence. Right? So now you can talk about confidence and know that when you pray. The will of God, since you seek it, and God revealed to you. Whatever God says, whatever you pray, God hears you. God hears you. And God will hear you. God will answer your prayer based on the specific prayer of the will of God. Amen. Amen. Alright? So, do we get that? So, number one, what do we say, number one? It's the will of God help us to build confidence to pray. Right? It helps us in our prayer. Number two, the will of God help us to focus our prayer on this will. We build the will of God. So specifically, I look up. Right? Number three, the will of God honors our prayer. Okay? God rewards our prayer since we are, you know, uh, since we're uh, since we, we are praying the will of God, very specific, very precise, right? Of course, God is fine with that. He will want to look for it. Amen. So, so important to know the will of God in my inner life. So let me ask you this question. How cool it would be to go to God and pray to God and walk up in prayer with God and, and absolutely know two things. Number one. He heard my prayer, he heard me, and he's going to do exactly what I pray. How cool is that? Right? It, it's so nice. It's so, it, it's so, it, it's so, you know, give you peace in your heart. Right? That no matter what happened in the coming days, in this time, in that time, that time, that time, thing, I'll show you a little about the scriptures. We have a confidence that God will bring to us everything is good. Amen? So that means there's no more time for days. No more time for fears. Right? Right? Because you know that it will come. Definitely. Amen? Hello. Alright. So. So. If you look at the scriptures, okay, you, the scriptures in verse 15, and, and when we know that He hear us, whatever we ask, we know. So if you notice, uh, the word know, in this scripture, it, it, it is twice, right? Okay? So what, what does it mean when we say, when God says, when we, what we know? It's actually, it's a conviction of assurances that what uh, that God will manifest what He has on His face is the real world. Really, it's an absolute confidence. That's what the word the word knows. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah. Right? It's not something that you know maybe or you just don't okay. know. Okay. So when the scripture says here for we know the Bible says we know that it's an absolute confidence. It's an assurance. Okay? That the will of God will manifest. Amen? Okay, so that's the reason why God says in first hour that we pray, but we pray what happens. And we pray for how we don't see see everything. Because you know the will of God in your life, so why are you not here? Okay. Need to pray. What is not urgent? Yes, it is. Right? I'm getting it. You start begging for God. You start thinking that. Right? Because God, there's a promise of God. The Bible says, not even is one word to him. Right? If you always, whatever God spoke to you, Amen. And another word here is that you see the word hears. Okay? And we know that he hear us. Okay, the word here is that it is not to define so that we will be on the same thinking. But the word hears does not mean that he just listen and then do nothing. Okay? The word hears means is to listen to something, understand it, and act on it what we heard. That's what the hears word means here. Okay? And God said he will respond to our prayers. So do you believe that there's no such thing as an answered prayer? I think Pastor Marshall last time, right? But there's no such thing as an that that's that's very true. Right? If you are the child of God, God always answers to you. And he just he and he just does he does it in different ways. For example, yeah. number one, sometimes God's answer directly. Okay? So I mean you pray something and by the time you finish praying your prayer, you get the answer. Let me explain that. Huh? You just pray and then suddenly you know that you, you, you done it. So let's turn our Bible in Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. Alright, the Bible says, Before they call, I will answer. While they are still speaking, I will hear. Did we get that? Let me repeat it. Isaiah chapter 65, verse 24. I'll be reading it in NIV. It says, if Before they call, I will answer while they are still speaking about their situations, about their issues in life. The Bible says, God said, I will hear. And, you know, the hear is, is just like what we talk about. The word heard is that it's not something that he heard and he will not answer it. The word he heard is God heard it. Okay. Heard something. He act on it. So the word here. You know, uh, uh, while they're still speaking, I will hear. It's actually what? It tells us that God's already answered your prayer. Right? You hear your, you heard your prayer, and God is doing something. Right? So that's what God, have you, and, are we getting it? Okay? So while, they, as I said, while they're doing their stuff, they're discussing all these things, the issues in life, and the, how they're going to talk, how they're going to tackle those issues in life, God already answered, sometimes God already answered the prayer before they know it. Okay? So there are the times that God answered immediately. Right? Immediately. Okay? So, like, I think, uh, the only, I, uh, I, I think, like, like, for example, when you are driving in a parking lot, have you experienced that? So I said, Lord, I wish I could have a parking spot, a good parking spot. And then suddenly, all of a sudden, boom, there's a car went out, and then, ooh, praise God. Yeah, thank you, Lord. I, I don't know, it happened to me when it was, you know, kings, kings to me. I think this me, you know, but, you know, it always, we always even ask our kids to pray before that, you know, I pray for a parking spot. All right? So, and there, that's not only about parking spot, but there are a lot of things in your life that, you know, before you out the world, because God already knows what's in your heart, what's your prayer, right? What you need. 
And sometimes God allows it to answer it right immediately. And just like the scripture says that before, you know, it, the Bible says that, you know, before they call, I already answered them. I already heard their prayers before they utter a words out of their mouth. Amen? Second thing. Sometimes God's answer is, of course, delayed. Okay? Um, that he's going to answer it by his, but, but in his time. Right? So you cannot hurry God. Lord, you know, I need it right now, Lord. You know, God doesn't work that way. I'm telling you. Okay? So let's turn our Bible in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18. I'll be reading it in a message uh, version. Okay? The Bible says, But God's not finished. He's waiting around to be gracious to you. He's gathering strength to show mercy to you. God takes the time to do everything right. Everything. Do you get that? So I'm reading on a message person. It said, God takes the time to do everything right. Everything. So, again, what God's telling us, God takes the time to do, make things right in our life. Okay? So, there are times that God wants you to, He wants for you to be, yeah, God wants to answer and give it to you, His will, what He had promised you in different times. Right? So, God will give us on a time and season where we, uh, where we are ready to receive it. Are we getting it? Okay? God, sometimes God will say yes, but not, but now, you are not ready yet. Okay? Are we getting it? But definitely, God will give it in His own time. Because God, the Bible says in Isaiah chapter 30, verse 18, that He is gathering strength to show you mercy. God takes the time to do everything right. Okay? God is rearranging our life. God is rearranging our situations. Alright? So, so that the right happening will take place in our life. Amen? Okay, number three. Sometimes God's answer is different. Okay? So God, uh, God said, you know, God, God's telling us, I know what you're seeking, uh, you are asking for, and I know what you want. God, you know, we, we are praying, we are praying to God, and, and, and God, you know, sometimes answers it will be different. You know? And, and, but, God is telling us, that, but actually what you really need is this. Right? Sometimes we pray based on our, you know, in our emotions, our desires, our, 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 you know, whatever it is. Okay? So, but God knows what's best for us. The Bible, he said that He will give it to us, the things that will only give glory to Him. Right? And for you, to live a life, a blessed life. Right? So sometimes we, we, we pray amiss. You know, we pray, we think that this is what we want. We pray that this thing should happen. Right? We're like a story, our, doing a, our, a storytelling, our life. Lord, I want you to do this. And this time, and this time, next month, this should happen. Right? And next year, this is what should be taking place. Lord, I want you to do that. Mm -mm. You don't tell your story to God. What should happen? <laughs> right? So, you know, it is not. Because God knows what's best for you. Sometimes we, 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 we pray on things that based on our emotions and selfishness, you know. And sometimes we pray we're not seeking the will of God. We've been praying, but I'm not receiving anything from God. So I'll be praying this way. Lord, I want you to do this and this and that. And next year, this should happen, should be taking place. You know? 
And then, you know, what? as I said a while ago, the reason why you're not receiving the uh, will of God in your life when you seek Him is because you're not willing in the first place to do what He's going to tell you. So you need to go back to that when you're seeking. You need to have a right attitude when you start seeking the will of God in your life. Your attitude should be what? Lord, speak to me. Tell me, Lord, what you want me to do. Mm -hmm. All right. So, amen. So, are we getting it? So, sometimes God will not give you what you want, but God will give you the best. He will answer you. I will give you the answer to the Father. I want to let you see uh, this model. Right? And this particular thing. Right? But God will answer you sometimes differently. I don't want to test you. I don't want to test you. I don't want to test you. So, you know, that's how God works. But you should be open to that change. Right? You should be open to, you know, to, uh, to the things that God wants to do. So when you seek the will of God, you need to allow God to, to renew your mind. Right? Don't just stick to what God says, and since I'm not receiving anything, this is what I want. But you should allow the Lord to minister to you and change the way you think. Romans 12 too, isn't it? So that you will be able to, to experience and approve God's will is in your life. You need to renew. Because sometimes when you pray for something and God wants you to have better, because sometimes based on our understand, limited understanding, right? We pray only this word. We don't see what's far after that, right? But God sees, you know, what will happen if you continue and pursue what you want, right? So when you do your seeking, you need to allow God to minister to you. You need to allow God to renew your mind until, right, you are here. This is how your directions of your prayer, but God wants you to have these directions. So as you pray and as, I, as you allow the Lord to minister to you, what will happen to your will? This is your will. You start. Aligning yourself to the will of God. And when, hap when that happens, bam, you have your answer. Amen. You get that? So you have to allow. You have to be open for God to change your plan so you can have the best in life. Amen. God will never withdraw anything that's good for us. Remember that. Okay? All right. Last one. Sometimes God's answer is what? Denial. God, sometimes God say, no. Right? Says, no. When God says, no, it's also answered prayer, isn't it? Did you get that? Because sometimes a lot of Christians, when, they, when God says, no, God did not answer my prayer. Bro, it's so hard. I'm broken. Actually, God is saving you for the worst thing to happen in your life. That's an answered prayer. Right? That's an answered prayer. When God says, no, no, you can't have it. Because it will ruin your life. It will derail your walk with me. Right? So what again, what we need to do is we need to spend time in the Word. Seek the will of God. When you seek the will of God, you need to first, what? Be determined that you will do what He tells you to do. Right? That's a key in order for you to have the revelations of God's will in your life. Amen. Are you getting it? So, if you are a parent, there are two ways you can be good to your kids. Okay? You can be good to your kids by what you allow them to have. Right? And you can also be a good to your kids by not giving them what you don't want them to have. Right? Do we agree with that? 
Okay? In all seriousness, actually, is that it is a poor parents that gives a child everything that they want. It's not a good thing. You know, you don't give everything to your child, to your children, everything that they need. And God works the same way. Because sometimes your kids, you know, especially children, they don't have understanding of what they are being asking for. Isn't it? Because they have limited understanding. Yeah, they're just kids. They don't know what's going to happen. All what they want is to enjoy it, right? But they don't know my, what might happen if you give it whatever they're asking for. You as a parent, you know. You have a, a, a you know, you perceive things before, right? You, you, you don't just look on their situations, but you look what will happen as a parent, right? Have you experienced that? Of course, right? Okay? The same thing also, the same manner also with God. That's why God says, no, sometimes our kids, we say no. But sometimes, yes, you can have that. Sometimes you don't. You can't have that. Because when we say no, it's for the betterment. You see it? All right? So, a, a same matter also with God. And much more better with God. So, that's why we need to learn to trust God in every ways. Amen? Okay? So, and, and God says, and we pray according to God's will, He honors our prayer. He answered them. Meaning, right? He honors it. He, 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 you know. He, God is so, it's so, there's gladness in the heart of God to answer, to honor by answering their prayers. Amen. Alright? So, I hope we learned something. Okay? So, so, again, there you go. So, these are the things that we need to learn when it comes to prayer. Alright? It's very important, church, that you have to know the will of God when it come when it come to God in prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. So Amen. All right. So now if you are, you know, if you are here, you walk in this in this church or you're watching and it's live stream, if you are not a believer, uh, I, I I know that it's God's will for you to become a believer of Jesus Christ. You know. And how do you do that? How do I know that? Because the Bible says that it is God's will that all people will be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. God wants you to know, God wants you to know Him. Right? God wants to be part of your life. Okay? So He wants you to know His Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, because Jesus is the only way you can be right with God. I mean, that's the will of God for us to receive the will of God. But there are also, you know, I hope, um, and there, there's also some of you have, you know, who absolutely refuse to get your finances in line with what God says, God's will for your life. You know, I, I know, how do I know that? Because God says, right, that, you know, it is God's will for us that we should give our tithes and offering to God. That's given. And what's the purpose of that? We don't, God doesn't need your money. But God wants you to trust Him. Right? Yeah, sometimes a giving touch and offering is a big you know, challenge. It's a challenge for every Christian. But what God is telling is that he's just, he's just renewing your mind. He is, God is teaching us to trust Him of all resources. And the Bible says is that if you, you know, we need to give our touch and offering to God so that there may be a uh, to the storehouse and God said challenge me on this he said he challenged us right and now if you trust him enough of your resources the Bible says that he will open the floodgates of heaven so sometimes we need to pass that stage right how do you know that you are completely trusting God is that challenge God is speaking to us he said challenge me and I will open the floodgates of payment. Right? Are we getting it? Okay? So I'm just teaching you here is that, you know, just for us to know the will of God in our life. There's so many will of God in your life. Right? But for us, we need to start knowing them. Start seeking them. Right? So that we will be able to do what is right and pleasing to God. So when we do that, when we know the will of God and we start doing the will of God, when you ask God in prayer, God will hear it. God will 
answer our prayers. So, and uh, as a parting words, that I want you to know that the greatest place in the world is to be in the centers of God's will for your life. Mm -hmm. Do you agree with that? The greatest place in the world is to be in the center of God's will for your life. So start seeking the will of God. You know, I hope you have learned by now that the greatest desire of your heart, I hope, is one thing. I hope that you have the burden desire in your heart for the rest of your life to know God's will for your life in every areas of your life. I hope you have this desire in your heart. You know, especially this when starting our, our year. Okay? Start your year this year right with God. Always seek the will of God in your life. Always have this desire, a burning desire to know the will of God for your life. It's concerning your social life, your, your spiritual life, your marital life, right? In your physical life, even your work life, you know. Okay? I want to find the will of God in my life. Amen? Okay? So the greatest delight of your life should be to do the will of God in your life. Amen? I hope you learned something. Alright? Let's all pray. Thank you, Lord. Father, we thank you so much, oh God, for your grace. And Lord, it's our prayer, oh Lord God, that you will continue to lead us and continue to teach us that we will always walk in accordance to your will in our life, Lord God. God, is our prayer that we will always have this burning desire in our heart to know you and to know your will, oh Lord God. In Jesus' name, Lord God. God, I just pray that you will seal your words in our heart. Write it in the tablet of our heart, Lord God, in Jesus' name, so that we will be able to live with it, that your words will be part of our life, oh Lord God, in Jesus' name. Father, we thank you. We just want to give you all the glory and honor, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray, and all your people will say, Amen. Amen.